Well, we hope you have a great uh, time over the next week, week and a half with family and friends, celebrate the holiday, and it's good to be able to share that with our family here. Uh, find ourselves in the season of um, gift giving and gift buying, and maybe it's appropriate that we also find ourselves today in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We've been studying here in these three chapters of 1 Corinthians, chapters 12, 13, and 14, and learning about um, being a part of the church, being members of the church. In chapter 12, I hope you remember that Paul compares church membership to a body with many different parts, and we defined biblical church membership as functional membership, that is, that we all have a work or works to do uh, that the Lord expects us to do. Last week we noticed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 how the biblical foundation of church membership is love. Love binds us to one another, and without love, nothing we do or accomplish really matters. So this week we turn our focus to chapter 14 and we think about the gift of church membership. I imagine everybody here enjoys receiving a gift. Um, who doesn't enjoy opening a gift? And the neat thing as you mature and, and sort of grow up, you enjoy giving gifts more and seeing someone else enjoy receiving and, and unwrapping a gift on a birthday or anniversary or Christmas. And one of the nice things uh, is just that joy that you can witness and participate in. I want us to be thinking about that as we consider what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. Because Corinth was a gifted church. In fact, all churches are gifted. Because when one becomes a Christian and God adds them to the church, God gives gifts to that person. Spiritual gifts. And Paul talks about some of these gifts in chapters 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. If you look back at chapter 12 for just a moment, I want you to notice a couple of verses beginning in verse 4. Let's hear the apostle's words here as he talks about this topic of gifts. He says, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Now notice that everyone in the church receives gifts from the one who place them in the church. And there are many different kinds of these spiritual gifts, many different kinds of works that can be accomplished using these gifts. But the purpose for all of them is the common good of the whole church body. That's the purpose. Now, some of the spiritual gifts that the church, for instance, in Corinth had, we do not have today. And I imagine that there are some gifts that we have today that they did not have in the first century in Corinth. God is the one who decides. Um, he gives the gifts, and he is the one who decides what kind of gift he gives and when he gives it. That's his choice. And we need to keep that in mind as well. He is the only one that's wise enough to make those kind of choices. 
as what kind of gift to bestow and when to bestow it. And we really just ought to leave that to him. The church has always gotten in trouble when it decided what kind of gifts it was going to have. That includes what happened here at Corinth. Now at the end of chapter 12, again, Paul makes a list of some of these different kinds of gifts that God has given to his church over time. You can see what some of those are. But he makes this statement in verse 31 that I want to, to use to bridge us to chapter 14 in what I think is an interesting way. So Paul writes in, in verse 31 of chapter 12, this exhortation, he says, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. The higher gifts. So wonder what those might be. Well, we know that he, he talks extensively about love in chapter 13, right? That middle chapter. And he ends that chapter by saying the greatest of these is love. But I want you to notice how chapter 14 begins. It sounds very much like the end of chapter 12. So it's like Paul is building this bridge for us between these chapters. Chapter 14, verse 1 says, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. So we have this phrase, earnestly desire, in both places. In chapter 12, verse 31, it was earnestly desire the higher gifts. In chapter 14, verse 1, it is earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. So there's a lot said about gifts in, in these three chapters. That much is obvious. Corinth was a gifted church. So are we. All churches of God are gifted. But there's another word that appears over and over again in chapter 14 that we do not want to miss as we study this. And it's the word for church. So uh, in the original, it's this word ecclesia. It means the assembly. That's what that word means, normally translated church when we read it in English. So ecclesia, the assembly, it's the church as we know it, the, the body that we've been talking about. It's composed of functioning, active members who love one another, and they demonstrate that love in real, genuine ways. It's not just a word that they speak to one another, but they show this love. But over and over in this chapter, chapter 14, this word church occurs. So a lot of times, as you read and study um, the letter to the Corinthians, people will say, well, chapter 14 is about gifts. Paul's talking about spiritual gifts. But actually, the word gifts occurs only once in the first verse. The word church occurs nine times in the chapter. Nine different times, once each, verse 4, verse 5, verse 12, Verse 19, verse 23, verse 28, verse 33, verse 34, and verse 35. Nine times church occurs in 1 Corinthians 14. One time the word gifts occurs. The point being, this chapter, often referred to as the gifts chapter of the New Testament, Paul is talking more about the church than he is about the gifts, okay? Why is that? Because that's what the Corinthians needed to hear, and I think so do we. You see, the Corinthians love their gifts. Man, they tell you all about their gifts. They wanted to show you their gifts, but they were taking for granted one of the greatest gifts they had been given Church membership. And it seems at times that they were almost climbing over top of one another in their attempts in worship 
to exercise their spiritual gifts. It was like a competition when they came to church, you see, in Corinth. Just as one example, look at verse 26 of chapter 14. Notice what it says there. Paul's sort of reflecting on what happens when Corinth gets together for worship. And he says, what then, brothers? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. Well, what's that all about? In their zeal at Corinth to show off what they could do. Whether it was to sing a song or preach a message or even to speak in a tongue. They had forgotten the purpose of the gifts they had been given. Yes, they had gifts, but they had forgotten what they were for. And the purpose was to build up the church. Another way to say this is, at Corinth, it had become a lot more about the individuals and what they wanted to do, and a lot less about the church and serving it and building it up. God gave them spiritual gifts to build up the church. And they had turned that into that God had given them spiritual gifts to build themselves up. And they were quite built up about it, puffed up, proud. And man, when they came together, they wanted everyone to know what they could do. So you can imagine what it was like. And any time that happens, oh my, what, what a mess of trouble for the church when that happens. When gifted people start competing to show what they can do. If I were to ask you today what the greatest gift God has given us is, I, I imagine that almost all of us could rally around the idea that the greatest gift is um, the gift of salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. We might say it different ways. We might say the gift of Jesus or the gift of salvation we have in Jesus. I think we could pretty much agree that that's our greatest gift. And Jeremy did so well speaking about that this morning as he had us think about the supper of the Lord. But you know, nothing's, nothing's greater, nothing's sweeter than that. I, I remember what Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. But if I were to ask instead, what's the, the next greatest gift? We can sort of agree on the greatest. What's the next greatest? We might have some disagreements. Um, at Corinth, I imagine, at least for a time, they would have said, the gift of tongues. We, we can speak in languages we don't know, which was a great gift to have on a mission field. And it seems like they really exalted in that. We might say something else. But this morning, I suggest to you from this chapter that one of the greatest gifts God has given us is the gift of church membership. He added us to his church when we were washed in the blood of his dear son. That is a gift. It is a gift to be treasured. It is a gift to be protected. It is a gift to be built up. You know, I don't know how you feel about your membership in the body of Christ, in this local body, in this particular ecclesia, But the biblical view of it is that it is a gift from God. 
it, it's unfortunate that, you know, in the religious world, the view has become so popular. Give me Jesus, but not the church. I'll, I'll take Jesus, I don't want the church. Think how ridiculous that is. It's like saying, give me a head with no body. That'd really work great, wouldn't it? That may just be a disembodied head. Or give me a husband, not a wife. These things go together, you see. You can't separate them. You cannot separate Jesus and his church. And so to say, I, I love the gift of Jesus, but I want nothing really to do with the gift of the church makes no spiritual sense. And, and no biblical sense. It will not stand before God. I, I'll tell you where, where I think we should stand. I'll tell you where I stand on this. I cherish the gift of the church that I've been given. I love the church. I love this church. This church. And I love the church in general. I consider it an awesome gift from God to me. I don't know where I would be without it. And as a result, I want to use whatever, whatever other spiritual gifts God has granted me to build up the body of Christ. That's what I want my life to be about. How about you? This is what Paul was saying to the Corinthians as he penned this important chapter in God's word. And, and folks, I fear for the souls of men and women who take lightly the gift of God's church, who treat the church as if it was built to serve them rather than for them to serve, who, who speak against the church with impunity, who disparage it and would rather, rather than build it, would seek to injure it. I fear for their souls. And so if I had the opportunity, I would remind them of how God feels about the church. And I would do so by maybe sharing this passage from Hebrews chapter 12, speaking to believers who have received the gift of salvation and church membership. The writer there says, Hebrews 12, beginning at verse 22, says to them, you have, you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly, there's our word, the ecclesia, the, the church, you have come to the assembly of the firstborn who, who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I hope everyone here this morning appreciates the gift we've been given. The gift of the church. So let's show it. And let's live it. Shall we pray? Great God, you're so generous to us. We pray we have been faithful in your word and now we will be faithful in living it out. Thank you for your many gifts to us.
Help us if we don't know what you've given us to discover it, to find those things you want us to do in your church, in your kingdom, those things you have given us gifts and talents to do. Help us to discover what they are. But let us today just appreciate the great gift of your son and his church. And let us devote ourselves to serving it so you may be glorified and the world may know. Thank you for hearing us today and being with us as we've assembled. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you for listening today as we've spent this time in God's word. Tom's coming to lead us in another song. If you need to come and, and ask for prayers or blessings from the church, help. If you need to obey the gospel today or to recommit yourself to, to your Lord, we give you an opportunity to uh, make that known. While together we stand and sing.